Oh, hi guys, Amber again. Welcome back to the spare room. It's Sunday morning, Easter. It's a nice day, we've had a little bit of rain. Out bright and early. You can still hear the birds out there. And I thought I'd wind this coil. I've pulled this apart. You see, we've got bits everywhere. I've found some fibre washers which look like to be pretty close to the right size. They weren't quite the right internal diameter, but if I'd thought of that before we started, I might have made that a millimetre smaller to find a fibre washer. So I've just cut them in half and filed the inside of the washer out to fit. And I'm going to stick some aerodite on there and, and epoxy them together. And we've got some electrical tape, so we're going to carefully and nicely wind some layer of electrical tape around the bottom. So that should work for the, the primary insulation. So this is what I've ended up with. The fibre washers are glued on nicely and they look nice and neat and tape in the middle. Now I'm just gluing this wire on to start with to hold it in place, just with a bit of 5 minute epoxy. I've got a bit of wire sticking out here. And when it's set, I'm going to probably have a go at just winding it on by hand and gluing it every now and again. I think we can get a nice neat coil like that. Rather than put it in the lathe and get it sorted, I think we're just going to wind it by hand. We'll see how we go anyway. This is going to take a little while. There's a few layers to go on it. I'm going to get to the end here and I'm going to aerodite it again. And we'll start the next layer back. We'll have a look when we've done a bit more. So if we have a bit of a look there. So far I've got four turns on there. It's looking pretty neat and tidy and even. Or four layers. I've just run some five minute epoxy. Which is awful messy stuff but it's probably the best way onto the coils there to keep them all in place before we start the next layer and I've got a weight sitting on there to, to stop it turning. I can't test the resistance yet because I've still got enamel on this wire and I don't really want to wreck the, the circuits. So I reckon we're probably going to get six layers on there which is about what I thought. I've just got the the roller wire there on the on the height gauge and we're going to wait for this to glue dry and put another couple of layers on it's going on pretty well I'm fairly pleased with it so far but it's taken me a couple of hours so we ended up with seven layers and that pieces still fit on there nicely without touching. I've gone for an odd number because one is up to the other side and then two is back on the same side, the wires, and then three is back on the on the opposite side. So it's probably neatest if we can have one wire out each side. So we've gone for seven. So I've put a bit of epoxy on there. I'm going to wait for that to dry off a bit and then I'm going to run epoxy all the way around just a nice smooth coating just to hold it all in place and keep the dust out. And I guess the next thing is to work out how much wire we got on there. So pretty full day later. I've, if we look carefully, I've run some epoxy all over this just painted it on fairly thin and it's clear drying so you still get that copper look which I like I've got seven layers on there and I've put a little bit of insulation where it crosses over the frame mostly to stop chafing and to stop shorts and I've trimmed a bit of the the enamel off the wire and put them on these two screws so if we have a look at this with the multimeter on these two terminals We've actually got about 1.2 ohms resistance through there apparently, which I hope is enough. 
but we worked out that we've got about about 9.6 or 10 meters of wire on there and fingers crossed we should have some sort of an electromagnet Anyway, that's the first sign of life. So where do we go from here? Looks like it should be nearly running and yes it should but we've run into a problem and I guess the design process being try it and see more than anything with me and a little bit of maths and a little bit of experience thrown in We've got a problem. This magnet being low carbon steel, it's there's 1020, can't be magnetized. I had a thought to put some big neodymium magnets in, in the sides here, but when you do, and I went as far as to actually drill these and insert magnets, but when you do, the magnetic flux just basically disappears. There's no way it's going to run. There's not enough magnet magnetism up here to, to do the job. Someone suggested that we could drill right through and put the magnets up here, and that might work. I'm not particularly confident because you've just got this mass of steel that just sucks out the, I guess in, in layman's terms, sucks out the, the magnetism and dissipates it so that there's not enough strength. Now we could drill this and insulate it and put a couple of big neodymiums in there and that would work too another thing we could do is make up a new magnet out of a piece of aluminium, a block of aluminium the same similar shape to keep this design which I really like and whack a couple of neodymiums in in here and that would work if we have a look at Mr Pete's channel lately he's building a, a very similar little dynamo for a steam engine and that's what he's done he's made the stator or the the outside magnet out of aluminium and put a couple of rare earth magnets in like a modern electric motor and that looks all right too but aluminium magnet and yeah, not really doing it for me another option is that i have this this horseshoe magnet which is the same size pretty much as a little bit shorter as the one we made and we saw this earlier in the series and that'll fit in there with the paint cleaned off too now if we could machine this out and remagnetize it or whether it needs remagnetizing this would make a really good option perhaps because there's heaps of strength and heaps of power in that to to, to make that work and it's, it's a fairly powerful little magnet and we could clean the paint off him and we could bore him out with an end cap on it and put him in and that would probably work very nicely so that's another option that we're still thinking about. The third option is to put another coil in the top here. So make two legs from 10 by 25 mil steel with a piece across the top with a couple of grub screws in it to hold it all nice and rigid and wind the coil on that and wire it up in series through the magnet and that should work too. That's the option I'm favouring at the moment. I'm really looking for feedback here because I know there's a lot of people who are going to watch this bit video who probably know more about this than, than I do. And what I'd really like is some feedback on what to do. Probably a secondary coil 
and I've drawn something up if you want to have a bit of a look at this here it's going to look fairly neat not quite as quaint and old fashioned as the horseshoe but it will make a fairly neat serviceable little motor and serviceable little dynamo and that's probably the option anyway we're still thinking about that for a few days we'll have to make a decision soon because all this is finished and we probably need to make up another video fairly quickly to get this finished and I'm now I'm, I'm this far along but I'm going to have a think for a couple of days and we'll see what happens anyway that's what's happening and best laid plans of mice and men they say or burn said anyway so we'll see what happens there and many thanks for watching thanks to all my new subscribers and for those that constant comment and always helpful in answering questions and more soon